Hi, this is Jim Bergman with Imperial. Today we're going to go over the TU701 Residential Heat Pump Trainer. I'm going to walk you through all the key features and benefits of this trainer and how we would use it to teach uh, residential and light commercial service technicians the basics of a heat pump. When teaching refrigeration, one of the first things we want to show students is simply how the low side and the high side pressure gauge operate, what happens when the compressor starts with the pressures, and then how to compare those pressures to corresponding saturation temperatures. So typically I like to start with the system off and explain to the students saturation pressures and corresponding temperatures. So in this case this gauge is rating about 66 to, uh, psi and that corresponds to about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. R34A is a nice refrigerant to work with because saturation temperature and the pressure are pretty much about the same. So we can walk students through what's happening on the low side and what's happening on the high side of the system. When they look at the gauge, you'll see the high side and the low side are the same. That's because there's no pressure difference across the system until the compressor starts. So one of the first things that we always want to show students is the relationships between pressures and temperatures. And really, you just want students to come in and fill the lines. Again, with the system off, I'm going to have them fill the suction line. I'm going to have them come in here and fill the discharge line, fill the lines at the reversing valve, so they start to understand what's happening with the refrigeration system and what the changes are when the system actually starts. Now that we understand the relationship with pressures and temperatures, next what I want to do is turn the system on and as I turn the system on I want the students to look at the low side gauge and the high side gauge and see what's happening with the pressure difference. So I'm going to go ahead and flip the switch and you can see as soon as the system starts, we hear the compressor start, the low side gauge starts to drop in pressure and corresponding saturation temperature and the high side gauge above is starting to work its way up slowly as the system is starting to operate. Also I'd like to show over here the sight glass and what's happening in the sight glass and that bubbles are normal until the system starts to stabilize and we'll let this run for a few minutes until we hit stabilization and then I'll start to show you through what we, what we do as far as an evaluation of the system operation. As the system starts up, again, we can see the liquid line starting to fill up with liquid through the extended side glass. And if we move down to the bottom here, we can see the refrigerant rapidly boiling as it reaches the drop in pressure and its corresponding saturation temperature. This is where we can show the students flash gas and what's happening as the refrigerant's turning from the liquid into a saturated mixture of liquid and vapor. So now that the system's had a few minutes to stabilize, it's very apparent that I have heat coming out of the outdoor coil, I have cold air coming out of the indoor coil, and obviously we're in the AC mode, so this is normal operation. So now what I'd have the students do is go around and feel the accumulator to get an idea of what's going on in the accumulator, feel the vapor line coming into the accumulator, the suction line going into the compressor, Carefully touch the discharge line so they can feel the heat coming from the discharge line and just get an idea of what's going on temperature wise around the system. Your hands are probably one of the best indicators of performance initially and obviously we're going to need to make some temperature measurements but this gives the students a good idea of what's happening as the pressures change and the high side pressure goes up that we're actually going to reject heat and the low side pressure goes down that we're actually going to start absorbing heat from the surrounding air into the system. With your own thermometer, like this Testo 905T2, you can go around the system, measure pressures and temperatures, look at things like superheat, subcooling, and even verify that the four-way valve is not leaking by from the high side into the low side of the system. So very easily, we can measure pressure on our low side, and we can see the pressure is about 30, which corresponds to about a 30 degree saturation temperature. If we look at our measured temperature on our test of thermometer here, we can see that it's 53, 52 degrees. So 53 minus 30 is 23 degrees, and this is 23 degrees of total superheat. Looking at the high side of the system, we can see that the pressure is about 170, 580 PSI. That corresponds to a saturation temperature of about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. If we look down, we're measuring on our liquid line, we can see that the temperature of the liquid line is about 78 degrees. So if we take 120 minus 78, we're at about 42, 43 degrees of subcooling. So the subcooling looks like it's running a little bit high on our trainer. 
using our thermometer, we can also verify that there's no hot gas leaking from the high side to the low side through the reversing valve or the four-way valve. So right now I'm measuring the vapor line temperature coming into the compressor. And if I move this back, we're at 34 degrees. I move this back to the vapor line coming off the evaporator coil. You can see that my temperature was within a degree. So we're okay there. We're not leaking any refrigerant past that valve. At any time during operation of the system, we can switch it from air conditioning over to heating. So just flip the switch, and right away your students can hear the reversing valve change. They can see that the pressure's equalized for a second, and that the suction pressure's starting to drop, and the high side pressure's starting to go back up as the system pressures will equalize and the system gets back to normal operation. Right away they'll notice that there's cold air coming from what was the outdoor coil now, and there's hot air coming from the indoor coil, indicating this, the system has switched its position and now it's operating in the heat pump mode. Everything through the system again, we have the students go through, use their hands to build temperatures and get an idea of what's happening in the system, and then go through with the thermometer and make superheat and subcooling readings, record the saturation pressures and temperatures, and get a good understanding of how the heat pump system now is operating as a heat pump rather than an air conditioning system. So as you can see, the Imperial TU701 can be a great training unit for residential and light commercial service technicians. A couple other key features about this that we haven't discussed yet are simply that it uses 134A as a refrigerant, environmentally friendly and very common refrigerant to use, and it also uses a lot of off-the-shelf parts from your local supply house. So if you have to make a repair to this unit, condenser fan, evaporator fan, or maybe even a compressor, you don't have to come back to Imperial necessarily to get the parts unless you want to. The TU701 can be used for a standalone unit where we keep the system sealed and we just use it to demonstrate the refrigeration cycle and the heat pump cycle, or you can use these as training modules and have several of them in a classroom and allow students to actually service the units, remove components, test components, uh, recover or reclaim gas, or any other service procedures you might want to do. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and got an idea of what you can do with a TU701 trainer. This is Jim Bergman for Imperial. Thanks for watching.